Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to make a PLC program which performs the following task. We have two workstations and a conveyor for delivering product from workstation 1 to workstation 2. We also have a sensor for detecting that there is a product at station 1 ready to move to the second workstation. When the sensor detects presence of a product, the conveyor starts moving and thus delivering the product to the next workstation. However, if this sensor does not detect a product for a certain period of time, then the conveyor goes off. Before we get into writing the program, kindly make sure you have subscribed to this channel and switch on notifications so that you will be the first one to see when I release new tutorials. I have opened Step 7 Semantic Manager and I have already done all the hardware configurations and now I'm on the programming window. In case you missed my video on hardware configuration, I will leave the link to the video in the description below. I'll start by giving my first network a title and I'll call it Start System. I will then introduce a normally open contact which will be our Start System button then a normally closed contact which, which will be our stop button and then a coil which will be the start memory. Then I'll introduce a hold on circuit with a normally open contact because our start button will be a push button. I'll give them addresses the address for the first normally open contact will be i0.0 .0. and uh, for the symbol we can call it start system button. Okay. For the normally closed contact, here we'll give it address i0.1 and for the symbol, we call it stop system. For our coil, this one will be a memory, so we call it m0.0. And for the address of this normally open contact on the hold on circuit, it will be the same address as to this memory. And so it will be M0.0. .0. Uh, we can give this a symbol and call it start memory. I'll then add another network. And I can call it conveyor controls. On this network, I'll have two normally open contacts, a pulse timer. For the pulse timer, we come here to timers. Then I pick this one, S underscore text. Then we shall have a coil. The coil here will be the conveyor motor and we can give it address Q4.0.1 Then for the symbol we call it conveyor motor. These two normally open contacts will be the conditions which must be fulfilled before the timer gets activated and the motor starts. The first condition here will be the start memory. That means that the, the start memory coil here must be at logic 1, meaning the system must be on. And so here we shall give it address M0.0 .0 for the start memory. 
Then for our second normally open contact, this will be the sensor that must detect that there is a product. Therefore, uh, we shall give it address i 0 dot 2. And for the symbol, we can call it sensor. We then have the timer. Let's call it T1. This TV here is the time value. And this is where we set the duration after which the conveyor goes off if the sensor does not detect a product. I'll give it a value. S5T hash. 10s, where the 10s represent 10 seconds. Here you must first calculate the maximum amount of time the product takes to travel from workstation 1 to workstation 2. This value here must always be greater than uh, that duration of time because you don't want an instance where the conveyor stops before a product reaches workstation 2. For the reset signal here, this will be the signal from the stop button and so the address will be i0.1. The program is now ready for simulation. I'll download it to my PLC. Then I'll put my PLC on run mode. I put on the monitoring mode on. Here is our simulator. If I switch on the system i0.0, .0, you can see that the system comes on. And so our first condition here is fulfilled. Uh, if the sensor detects a product, it sends a feedback to the PLC that will be i0.2. And therefore the conveyor starts running. Assuming that the products are coming in succession, then every time the sensor detects a product, our time value here gets reset. But in case the sensor does not detect a product for a duration of 10 seconds, then the conveyor must go off. As you can see, it has went off. In case the conveyor is on, then someone presses a stop button. You can see the conveyor goes off automatically. That's it guys. If you like this video, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel for more content.